two shows that aren't attracting controversy that we want to get into. Uh, and again, I'll let you kind of decide where we go next. We've got the first three episodes of The Boys and we've got the new series, The House of the Dragon. What's What do you want to discuss? I, I think I'll go with The Boys because that's most fresh in my mind because I just watched the, la- the third episode today. Okay. Uh, um, it, to me, we're, we're, we're right back into it. Yes. Right back into it. It, it now, was I, a lot. I have heard. I have heard a couple of people complain, going, "Oh, God, we haven't seen enough penis." I'm like, "What? <laughs> you haven't seen enough? You haven't seen enough penis?" Like there was a guy that duplicated himself twenty million times with a langer yeah, down there to was, his knee. There what was no penis when he did that. It was all yeah. ass eating, Jerry? All <laughs> ass eating. That's not what we want. But let's <laughs> go through. Kind of for anyone, there was a lot of it. There's three episodes, three hours of the boys. It's I love the boys, but it was a lot. It was, and I tried to watch yeah. it all in one. I've watched all three episodes twice now because that's what I do for this show. Um, and that was intense. So let's catch you up on what actually happened because there's a very good chance that you don't remember some of the key bits. So let's get take you through a high level view of the first three episodes of the boys and Mother's Milk, who's now lost so much weight that he's called. Uh, I don't know if you picked this up. He's actually called Mother Skimmed Milk now. Uh, he. He is now the beleaguered leader of the boys and things aren't going great. He has to kick Butcher out because apparently now dying is gross misconduct in the CIA and his plans to assassinate Newman, dictated by the way by her presidential running mate, keep getting foiled with even her kid able to comfortably take out the boys. In a rare win though, he does seem able to flip a train to inform on Vod. After being friend zoned by Kamiko, well she gets some long overdue therapy and a penis in her vagina from the barista at Jitterby uh, Frenchie begins a love affair with Colin. The good news here, he doesn't need to meet the in-laws. The bad news is because he murdered them. Uh, a few grey pubes sends Homelander into a spiral, so he drafts the world's most intelligent soup sage and also drafts starlight-hating conspiracy theorist Firecracker into the Seven to spice things up because the reality of being a dad is frustrating him. Just get a car like the rest of us, mate. Or do what Jerry did and get another dog. <laughs> As for Ryan, the sp- by his power, he is a terrible soup and straight up murders the stuntman hired to play bank robber for his first televised save. Uh, this leaves him so wracked with guilt, he thinks it's a good idea to go play foosball with a dying butcher who's torn on whether to drug him or not. Personally, I'd knock Ryan out just for how annoying his half-broken voice is, to be honest, but whatever you feel, Homelander. Meanwhile, Yui's dad suffers a stroke leading to an awkward reunion with his mother who abandoned him. The Deep is cheating on his secret oct- octopus girlfriend with his new co-worker Sage. Ashley wants to hand in her notice and we still found time for images that will haunt us forever as we saw what a human centipede of a man eating his own ass multiple times over would look like. Yes, guys, the boys are well and truly back for season four. Three episodes, Jerry, a lot to take in all at once. What were your thoughts on the three episode premiere? We'll get into the individual kind of plot strands as we go on. But yeah. just overall, are you happy it's back? Was it a lot for you? Were, were you? Did you just binge it? Or what are your thoughts kind of coming off the three episode premiere? The light is back. Um, this was a show that it w- I was actually very reluctant to watch. Not that I didn't want to watch it. I was like, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. So I kind of, I came in um, just, could I say, midway to season three. So I binge watched the first season, second season. I was, I was fucking hooked. Mm-hmm. Watched season three. I was like, this is absolutely great. So I've been waiting for this one. Uh, delighted it's back. But Jesus, it was a lot to take in. Those first two episodes was a lot. So I I, I stopped and I'm like, Need a breather here. I need a breather. I, I, you know, I'll take a breather. I'll watch House of Dragon. Holy fuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> I need a two breather after that one. Yeah. So I watched the third episode today. Uh, it, it is certainly a lot to take in because they are quite long episodes. But um, you can see now we're starting to scale upwards here now. And it's not just kind of, we're not just going f- for a fantastical, crazy shit going on. Like, yeah, um, he, people with giant penises and, and, Superman, the super people orgies and shit like that. You know, okay, we went a bit crazy with this guy who's duplicating himself six, seven times eating his own ass. However disgusting that is. Oh, there, yeah, listen, if you're into that shit, you know, you go and right then ahead. getting pink right eye. Let, let's yeah, and getting pink eye, yeah. got pink eye from it that affected him in the fight. <laughs> yeah. Which is no. just fucking strange. It is. It's fu- It's mental. I want to meet the writers, the original comic book writers and the writers of the show. I want to sm- shake their hand and smack them at the same time because I'm like, <laughs> fucking shit. Or like, what? The- Do we need to get you therapy? What the fuck? It's, 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 it's exactly. It's, it's brilliant. It's great to be back. 
Um, you can clearly see that they are amping up because it's now been confirmed that season five was going to be the last season. Um, and that was Jack Quaid put that out onto Instagram. So we are getting one more season, which I think is fantastic. I think a lot of people thought this was the last one. So I'm really happy that we're getting at least one more season. Um, obviously, it has diverged from, from the comics. Not completely. There's still some story elements there. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. I know how they end. And it's a fucking crazy mental ending. So if the series is at even half of what that ending is, it's going to be spectacular. And I think for people who've never read the comics or graphic novels, um, you have no fucking clue what's coming. No clue. And that's what makes this so good. Um, it, it, it is great to have it back. It's great to see um, so many characters... Uh, Back again. I, I love this. The fact that you call mothers milk. What do you call them? Skim milk? Skim milk. I do just call them half and half. Um, Because you're about half the fucking size. And the fact that he's no beard as well. And he seems to be he, he seems to be doing the Henry Cavill things. That one scene he has a mustache and the next scene he doesn't. Then the next mm-hmm. scene he does. Fucking come on. Get get your shit together. Fucking grow it or don't. Um, it, it, It's great to see Homelander is just. I'm sorry, but he is just fucking fantastic. Oh, yeah. It the 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 actor's name I it escapes a- a- me Anthony Starr. Don't worry, Anthony we're going to be talking Homelander. Yeah. Don't you worry. Just just fucking fantastic. Uh, have to have them all back is is great. The different stories, so many story points, and that's what makes it kind of difficult to just binge watch this particular season because there's so much going on. Because you're like, if you miss one little thing, you're like, oh fuck. Which mm. I actually I do have to ask you, but I'll ask you off air. I'm like, I saw somebody at the end of one scene. I was like, shit, what did I miss there? I miss them there, so I'll ask you. I'll ask you off that off uh, air. We'll 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 talk about it. But very happy it's back. It's fantastic. Yeah, the boys is. I'm going to be a bit controversial here. The boys <clears> is one of my favorite shows. Okay, and I love it being back, and I enjoyed these three episodes. Oh, but for me, it feels a little bit off. Okay, and mm. what I'll compare it to, and this is a weird comparison, is remember the last season of Love Hate, where. They kind of knew, and this was like Love Hate remained a really, really good TV show right until the end. But at that stage, they kind of knew that every week they're going to be all over Twitter. So then they started playing to that crowd and kind of playing to what they thought people wanted to see. So we got weird things happening. Like we got, for no reason, Tommy started running around in the nip. Why did that happen? Like what, what, where did that build it? Like that, like Tommy has concussions. Is that a problem in the gangster community? That's more like American football or wrestling. Like, um, and it was just kind of for memes more than anything else. Mm. I don't think that the, the, that's what the boys is doing. Cause the boys has always done weird shit. It is like a, a guy eating his ass several times over while masturbating to his friend's own superhero. That's bog standard for the boys. That is just like exactly what we expect in this show. So that's not the issue I have a problem with. But last season, the boys kind of stumbled into being a, a bit of a political satire, but did it really, really well with Homelander's turn to the hard right. And of course it did it. He's that in season two. We're going out with Stormfront and everything there. And I'm into that. But now, for me, with us being in a U.S. election year, it kind of feels like they're playing up to that a lot. It kind of Very feels so. like yeah. they're going for it and they're like trying to be really clever and really com- like really comparing people to Trump. And they did it so effortlessly previously. Like I'll never forget one amazing quote from Stormfront where it's like, don't try and get 500 million people to like you. Just get 5 million people to be really angry. And I'm like, that stuff is great because I can compare it to Trump. But now it feels like Homelander is becoming Trump. And I'm like, that's not what I watch this show for. What I love about this show is... The basic concept, and this is what grabbed me, and th- they do this still, and it still works, but the part I love is, here's what superheroes would be like in the real world, you know? They'd be asshole narcissists with superiority complexes. They use their powers to do weird sex stuff. They'd kill normal people, even by accident, all the time, because they're out of control. They'd be corporate commodities, they'd be celebrities, they'd be obsessed with protecting their own image, and that's the stuff that I like, and it's the flavour of the show that I like. Like, in this episode, one of my favourite moments was uh, the Making A-Train movie that they were doing, and where Feral Streep came in. (laughs) Amazing stuff. Um, Phenomenal, and really good satire on what the... um, 
on Hollywood and on celebrity and on, you know, the kind of fickleness of it all. That's what I want this show to be a satire of. I don't mind it having allusions to Trump, but I don't want Homelander to be a direct comparison because I come to this show to get away from that shit. So I don't mind you making me think of it and then just dropping a hint. Oh, by the way, Homelander might be a bit like Trump. Isn't that interesting? But don't make Homelander Trump. And I feel that that's coming. And I have a very important question to ask you, Jerry, based on Homelander, because I do want to discuss him. He is the main character of this show, the big, the big draw, and, and and this stuff is important when it comes to discussing this show. My question for you is, where do you keep your gray pubes? Your jar-like? Um, it's in the cupboard in the in the uh, bathroom. <laughs> is it beside your Nazi memorabilia or is it yes. <laughs> right fair that's good that's it's the best place it's like it's what Hitler would have wanted um, Homelander is kind of having a bit like crisis and missing purpose as he starts to see Ryan being pegged as the next big thing and that, it kind of adds Firecracker and Sage to the Seven to the point that A-Train, the Deep and Ashley are all looking at their own spots now and kind of getting a bit unsettled. Well, we also have the amazing new Black Noir who can't keep his mouth shut despite the fact that the only thing people says to him is stop talking. That is the one thing you don't do. Um, And he just wants to make friends as well. I think we need to address the state of the Seven as it stands like and Connie, what are the big things that you're kind of picking out and noticing when it comes to the seven because things seem they seem uneasy they seem to be cracking a little yes, bit definitely well okay right so let's let's go with a train a train is absolutely having serious guilt issues um the fact that he's helped them multiple times now he, he saved huey he gave them the footage to exonerate the other guys um you know uh, absolutely we're getting to see A Train. He's feeling guilty. He wants to obviously have a relationship with his family. He can't have that because obviously his brother in the wheelchair, but it was, you know, it was caused by them as well. So uh, he's definitely feeling guilty. He's definitely feeling like he just wants out now at this stage. Uh, then you've got the deep. The deep just wants to love his octopus. That's all he wants. And, he, and I can absolutely 100% see, you know, he is going to do a burner and go with. Uh, that octopus into the sea or Homelander is going to get the octopus and kill it. You know, can you I know, just, one, can one I just add and bro, yeah. if you're going to, she's not that octopus. She's Ambrosius and Ambrosius. Oh, sorry, Ambrosius played. Do you know who plays Ambrosius? No. Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton plays Ambrosius. Fuck <laughs> off. One of the best actors in Hollywood today. Imagine that pitch meeting. It's like, so you're Tilda Swinton, obviously. You were, we want to have you in the boys. Uh, we're not going to have you show up and nobody's going to know it's you. Uh, you're going to play an octopus that fucks one of the superheroes who can speak to fish. And she's like, yeah, great. Sign me up. Tilda Swinton yeah. is Ambrosius. <laughs> yeah. Which is 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 just blows my mind that is i have no idea about that um black noir i'm i'm looking at the trailers going the fucker died in the last season what the, why yeah. is he doing here the fact that they're replacing with an actor who doesn't shut the fuck up i think is actually brilliant yeah. absolutely love it um uh, sage sage is extremely dangerous mm. extremely dangerous for the fact is that she's the first one apart from homelander who actually seems to have and I'm not even I'm not even giving Homelander this the credit here, but she seems to seriously have a, a, a proper brain. She is the most, as she has said most uh, times, the most intelligent person in the world. Not just the most intelligent woman, most intelligent person in the world, or the cleverest person, or whatever, smartest, whatever you may be. Um, she is more da- I think she is more dangerous than anybody else. Mm. Because look at look what she did. She set a trap for the boys. Um, did which at first didn't look like a trap, and you're like, oh, this is so a fucking trap. And of course, it turned out to be a trap. She is extremely dangerous because she is so smart. Like she is obviously um, uh, Sherlock Holmes level smart. She can see things before they happen or whatnot. She she can think of all the variables. She's extremely, extremely dangerous. So you look at all those other members and you think they want out. And then of course, we have um, the, the new, the new. Um, oh yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, she's the new one on, on the squad now as well. Um, because it certainly seems like Marjorie Taylor Green, yeah, I can tell you, yeah. Jesus Christ. 
and I say, it, see, that's exactly what you were talking about earlier on. They are trying to make it look very much like this is what America is now, mm. to the point where even I don't know her. What's her? What's her actual name? Firecracker. In it? Firecracker. The fact that she actually, when she was doing one of her podcasts, she had a Ron DeSantis yeah. uh, sticker in the background. I'm like, lads, come on, like that's just fucking stupid. Um, great character now. Great character. Uh, I think Sage is fantastic as well because I didn't see it going the way it was the way it did because I thought because she's so clever she's not actually going to do what fucking Homelander wants her to do but no she's really gone for it I'm like oh shit so the two of them working together that is that bodes very badly for the boys mm. because she to have somebody like her with Homelander is fucking terrible news absolutely terrible the fact that Homelander is certainly cracking under the pressure. I, it, it was bad of those couple of seasons before, but he's seriously gone downhill now. The fact that he's he's, he's collecting all these pubes, which is fucking hilarious. Um, he seems to be getting headaches now, and he's very, very frustrated. You can, you can see when he looks at those Starlighters, he just wants to kill every fucking one of them. And then the fact that he's talking to himself in the mirror, it's... No, it's it's got it. The, the seven is in in a way the seven's completely fucked, and in another way the seven are, are just the most diabolical, evil, shower bastards that have ever been. But the fact that it's only really three of them, the others are wanting to to get out of it now, and it's called the seven, but there's only six of them. Just put one more person in there, please, because that shit pisses me off. It's called <laughs> the seven, but there's only six people. Like, put one more person in. Just any random fucker. Just I don't care who it is. Just put someone in because it pisses me off. Um, I'm liking where I'm liking where it's going. Um, because it is new. There is stuff. There are some obviously little things that are being brought into it now that are directly from the comics. Um, but there is a lot of new stuff, and I'm like, yeah, this is mm. this is did, 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 like with the previous show. This is giving me surprises, and I'm like, I'm really liking this. This is really really good. Um, it's just Jesus, Star Anthony Star is just is mind bogglingly good in yeah. this. He's fantastic. Now, I don't think this is the thing, right? So I would say it's a little bit critical of Acolyte like before this a bit the acting. Mm. There's not a bad actor in this show. Not a single bad one at all. Yeah. Uh, Carl Orban is just, <laughs> yeah. it's just fantastic. Oh, we'll discuss Butcher, don't yeah. worry. Yeah. Jack Quaid, fantastic. Anthony Starr, just, he is the star of the fucking show. Yeah. He really, really is. Literally. Because there's a part of you that, like, you just, he's the most evil. This is fucking Hitler. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is as close to Hitler and is in superhero form that you're going to get. There is all that, that other part of you, like, I like this guy. I'm like, yeah. It's it's the whole thing about you know you watch the original uh, Star Wars you, you root for Darth Vader yeah you do you do root for Darth Vader even though he's killed millions of people yeah but you root for him so you got your rooting part party is like oh, butcher kill this fucker and your part is like don't die Homelander please yeah it's it's that's the way it is it's you, you are very conflicted when you watch this character because you know he's bad but you love how bad he because you don't really know how bad he's going to get because he is going to get worse. Yeah. You think he, you think he's bad now? Fuck, you have no idea. He, he he's going to get 10 times worse. He's fascinating. Like, he's just yeah. compelling television to the point that, yeah, I'm kind of at the stage where they've turned me to not wanting to see him die. You know what I mean? I'd like to see how he'd get his club and so that intrigues me and we know it's probably coming like at the end, however mm -hmm. they kind of pull it off. Um, But he's just so fascinating now. I love the way they've kind of made him... He's not vulnerable in terms of like his powers and everything, but you know, we, we're starting to see him in his undies now and stuff like that as well. We're starting to see like his pubes, and you never think a Homelander is even having pubes or anything like that. You know, it's just he seems human, he seems mortal in so many different ways. He's aging, and again, it's just stuff we would have never thought of. Um, I'm interested in kind of where it goes, and I love the recurring theme with Homelander's calendar or character is he always needs because he never had parents, he needs a paternal figure to give him direction, to love him, to kind of 
you know, point him in the right direction and make him feel big and confident and this and that. But he also doesn't like that. Like there's the part of it where he got everything he wanted. He's running the seven, but he's able to literally just tell the deep to like blow a train and they both just stand up. Like there's not an argument. They just stand up and are ready to suck and be sucked. Um, And he's got everything he wants, but he, that doesn't compel him because his invulnerability is like a wall. It's like Alexander the Great conquering all kingdoms and then weeping for there was nothing left to be conquered. Um, I love the nuance of him picking Sage as his advisor. I love the fact that she's a black woman who, despite being a superhero, despite being the most intelligent person on the planet, is still living on the breadline as we meet her. But also at the same time, she should hate everything the Homelander stands for. Like yeah. Homelander is the epitome of what has dug her into her situation, despite all of her powers and the abilities and, uh, that she should have. But as we see, and this is part of the sad art that does work for me because it's subtle and not on the nose. But as we see with people who head towards the hard right, you'd have always considered the right, for example, as, um, you know, the privileged, the conservatives, the rich getting richer, looking after themselves, the people who all look the same. But again, now who is in Ireland, who's going towards the hard right? A lot of the working class people and people who would have grown up in disadvantaged areas. And you'd say, why would they go towards the hard right? The right are the people that put them into a disadvantaged situation. So what's going on? And that's the complexity and nuance of this political moment yeah. in time that are, I think Sage as a character captures as a whole, just to look at her and then to see her opinions and the way the decisions she makes. Um, I like Fire Firecracker as well. Yeah, I I, just, I like how uh, the complexity of Firecracker holding a grudge against Annie, but also being right to hold a grudge against Annie um, for being like kind of a, a turning from a teen pageant bully into kind of the woke queen of the world on the internet. And if you're Firecracker, I can totally see your point. It, like she's like, she's a fucking bitch. I know that. Per How many people have we seen like that we've known in the past? Like we go back 20 years and we've known people who, as we know them, they're dickheads. But then you see them on social media and they're like, I just care so much about this issue. And you're like, you're not like that. You're a knob. And that's the way she sees Annie, but it's not how we see Annie. So she challenges what we want to see. So that brings an extra element to her. She's also sneakily intelligent. Like the speech she had to Sage where she's like, what are you giving these people? What are you selling? And she's like, purpose. These are people who have nothing and I give them a reason to live. Um. I love Ashley and I really hope she's not sidelined here. Um, She's one of the show's VIPs. It's, uh, I just are MVPs. I just don't see how or where she fits. Like, how does Ashley fight back? A-Train and the Deep have superpowers. So they can do something. They can inform. They can do this. They can do that. How does Ashley fight back? Um, And I really hope they don't just sideline her. She's amazing. Um. I want the deep to run away with Ambrosius. I was devastated when he cheated on her. Um, I'm really shipping that. And this show is now messing me up in the same way that Game of Thrones made me think that some incestuous relationships were cute. You know, it's kind of messing with my brain and <laughs> fucking with me <laughs> in a way. The best part of all of the seven action, though, is two things. One, Black and Wire is amazing. There's nothing more to say. It's just the new Black and Wire is amazing. I, I admit it initially was like, is that something we know? Is there a mystery here? But it's clear Clearly not. It's just some random. Um, I, I kind of wonder how that works. And I want them to dig in a little bit deeper. I don't want a whole Black Noir episode, but I want them to be like, what is his powers? How does it work? How does that make him Black Noir? And and that kind of stuff. How, did they find a like for like person? Like, or, you know, we know Black Noir was black as well. And there was elements of that that played into it. We saw that in the flashbacks they had. Um with Soldier Boy's origin story and so on. So I'd love to get in a little bit deeper, but again, not, not too much because it's just a funny character. But for me, I really liked Todd and his serious Pete Davidson energy being murdered viciously. <laughs> I'm like, I know that's played as a horrific thing, but thank fuck Todd is dead. Hated the guy, the lion. <laughs> <laughs> But there's something that's really upset me genuinely here. And oh. I want to I wanna have a bit of a rant to get your thoughts. I'm, and this is why this show felt off for me because this, and the way they just threw this away, just was like, no, that's not what's been happening. I want to talk about Frenchie and Kamiko, okay? Possibly the duo in the show I'm most emotionally invested in. Yeah. I'm really upset by the developments in their storyline. 
And on paper, I don't hate it. If you'd have told me the plot as a high level thing, I'd been like, okay, I'm open towards that. Like I'm a proponent of giving more visibility to kind of platonic male friend, male female friendships. I don't think every male female friendship on the screen needs to be romantic. By visibility is something that culture needs to do better than better on in general. And Frenchie is a perfect kind of face for that. His like again, if you told me Frenchie's boy, I'm like, of course he's boy. Yeah, of course he is. Frenchie just doesn't limit himself to any excess. Like he he will do whatever makes him happy or whoever, and that's yeah. just him. But the way that they did it, to throw away three series of building them up and will they, won't they, what is this, this is true love, getting them closer, bonding them together, and to throw that away with one line of her signing, this is never going to happen, feels like a massive betrayal to an emotional story I was interested in. And I'd have been fine if they took us on that journey a little bit and we were there with Kamiko. And maybe there was a bit of tension around like Kamiko not knowing how to tell Frenchie that it's not going to happen, you know, and there was something there. Um, and again, they are trying to kind of roll back on this with Kamiko doing like kind of therapy and her own solo mission now and then kind of turn into drink and stuff. So it's clear that the two, maybe they will get together in the end, but they're just not emotionally ready for each other and what it, the, it, the meaning that being together would bring on each other's life. It's like Frenchie says at one point, we can't save each other. But people can save each other and people can be good together and people can join together to make their lives better, but they won't have to be an emotionally ready place for that. But I hate how it was just tossed aside, like nothing that's built up to this actually matters. What are your thoughts on this? Do you feel that I'm being fair? Do you think I'm nitpicking? Do you think Frenchie, Colin and Kimco's individual development is kind of worthwhile? What are your own kind of feelings? I I, I, t- I, I agree with you. Um, To me, I don't see, I don't want to call it a betrayal because the show is that good. But it seems to be the only thing that they've gotten wrong to, for for this uh, season anyway, um, I I understand you know with the culture nowadays you have to show more diversity you have to show this uh, so many different points of view and so many things but like you said they had built this up for so long over three seasons that if they had used this season to tell us uh, over a, a number of episodes that it wasn't going to happen that would that would be absolutely fine it was the fact that it was done like that. Three mm. seasons and then boom, one conversation because she's pissed. No, I'm sorry, but no, you, you should. There should have been an internal conflict for, for, for her, maybe to say, Oh, I don't like him like that, or for him to say, You know, actually, no, I'm no, I'm not into whatever it may be. They just threw it away. Um, I can understand maybe why they did that because there is so much going on. Oh, it, no, this was an important part of the show. Um, to me, I think it still is an important part of the show because we don't really know exactly what's going to happen. I can understand as well the reasoning behind him getting it, Colin, isn't it, Colin? Yeah, yeah. Reason because of you know, you know, kind of murdered his whole family, but whatever. Um, it's a thing for me where it is, it's the one mistake they've made. Mm. It's the, yeah, I can't really kind of put it into words. It, I don't like the fact that they did it. I'm, 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 I'm like, right, okay, fine, you did it. Let's move on. Yeah, because they've done it now, so there's not much we can do about it. Would I've liked to see them do it a different way or not do it at all and actually continue the will they, won't they type of scenario? Yes, but it's done now. There are more important things. Let's move on. But am I happy about it now? Yeah, because and it I, was I... good. It was a great. It was a great part of each episode because they were so protective of each other. And you're like, mm. is this going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Like, what's going on here? And then, oh, just like the fucking, that's it, done. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. And and I don't think it's the end for them. I do think they'll come back together. And and and, and like, it, I definitely don't think that's the end of Frenchie and Kimiko, like being a, a duo in this, whatever way that looks. But and, and I'm okay with them getting a bit of time to f- flesh their own, like to fly their own wings. You know what I mean? That's okay. But yeah, it's just the way that they did it. Because again, I didn't even see it as a will they, won't they? I, I thought they were. 
You know what I mean? I'm like, Derek Hubble, like that, that was confirmed last season. And now it's just like, oh, we're never going to happen. That's not how I understood this relationship. And you just haven't told me that story. Anyway, look, yeah, rant over. Okay. There is a lot to like about this. Another yeah. thing that's a bit interesting, though, is Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Of course, uh, people may know him as Negan from The Walking Dead, prior perhaps his best own role before then. Seemed like absolutely perfect casting for this show when they announced him coming up here. And we saw him in the ads. We're just like, yes, I get it. He's in this as Butcher's old workmate Kessler, but we haven't really got to see him much so far as Butcher seems kind of on his own path. And, and Butcher's in a weird kind of funk, which I don't hate because the show doesn't always have to be around Butcher. Um, And actually the show, in re-watching it, felt a bit Butcher heavy, you know? And, and I was like, I get this character. I understand him, especially when they did the arc with his family. I'm like, I understand him now. Okay, let's get on to different things. Um. And then, like, so Butcher's kind of, you know, trying to rebuild the relationship with Ryan. He's dealing with his own mortality. He may be done with the boys. Obviously, he's not. But, like, you know, he may be working with his old team in some sorts. And that's where Jeffrey e. Morgan and Kessler is going to come in. Um, What are your thoughts on this corner of the show so far? And how is this landing for you? And where do you see it kind of going? Because I feel like I, this is something that, for me, is a bit underdeveloped. But I don't mind that because we've got a whole series to tell that story. This is something yeah. where they're just starting off slow and it's obviously going to lead to something. I'm just intrigued where it's going to lead. So how, how's it kind of settling for you? So when we first we first see him, um, you're like, OK, where's the, where's this going? What's what's going on here? This is interesting. Such a great actor. He, I'm saying to yourself, you better have a good role. It might not. Don't just give me a throwaway thing here. And I don't think it has so far. Mm. Um, I think it's it's left me wanting more. It's like I want to see what is exa- exactly they used to do together. I want to know what exactly they they uh, did. Their their interactions over the f- over the fact that Butcher is very much flip floppy in this in this uh, season so far. You think he's you know he's helping them, and then he might be against them because he might be stealing um Huey's files, and then he doesn't steal Huey's files, and then he might be going against him another way, and then he might be trying to put you know drug the kid, and then he doesn't drug the kid. He's so flip floppy in this in this series. It's like Jesus. Okay, I I, I am I do love love Butcher, but just give me one or the other. Mm. You know, just give me one or the other. At this point, I know you're dying. You know, you've got six months to a year. I get it. Um, but it it's just it's a bit shaky for me. Yeah, right now. I'm like, I'm happy to see how they develop it. Like what you said, let's develop it over the next few uh, episodes. Let's see how it goes. I definitely want to see more of uh, Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. I did say that right. Yeah, you got it. Uh, his, his character is, I want to see what exactly he doesn't have. I, I won't say he has a hold over, over uh, Butcher because he doesn't, but he obviously knows Butcher quite, uh, quite a, a good deal, like more than the rest of them anyway. Uh, so it's very interesting to see exactly where they go with this. Um, I don't see he's he's kind of right now. He's kind of in that shade of gray in terms of he's not a bad guy. He's not a good guy. He's kind of right in the middle. Is he going to go one way or the other? Because I think when we first saw a soldier boy, we didn't really know what was going to happen there. And then mm. we realized, oh, sweet Jesus Christ. OK, OK, OK. Yeah. It's happening. This shit's happening. I think this could be not to the same extreme. But I think it could be something very similar to that. So I'm very interested to see where they go with it. It's it's like this, like like this show. This show just keeps me wanting more. Um, but I t- I definitely think three episodes to start her off was too heavy. If they'd have just given us two, I'd actually, you know what, that's enough. Yeah. Let me now get slowly back into this because it was so much information. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th- th- this has left me wanting more, especially those two, because is he gonna f- completely be away from the boys is he going to come back to them what's going to happen are they are they going to ask him back is he going to ask to come back it's a whole different level now and with everything starting to amp up we're now getting more and more characters that have to fit in here so yeah it's compelling there you go it's compelling i like it um i think i've got a good feel for this story and and where it's going to go butcher is kind of torn right now between business as usual butcher which would be the guy who wouldn't think twice about Drug and Ryan because that's what needs to happen to continue his mission against the soups versus Butcher facing his mortality. Mm-hmm. And Butcher kind of having to... He's been kicked out of the boys. They're finally done with him. Like, this is it. And I do think they're going to commit to that to a point. Um, He's obviously going to come home for the final season. But, like, I think 
he needs to find himself and he needs to figure out who he wants to be and what he wants to leave behind. And that's where he is. I think that's where Kessler is going to come in, in that he is going to remind Butcher of the aspects of himself that he didn't like and the person he doesn't want to be when he leaves this mortal coil. In the same way that Yui has always been Butcher's... um, kind of, you know, moral center or moral compass, you know, you has been the person who's always steered him back towards being good, partially because he reminds him of his little brother, obviously, and there's that yeah. whole tragic backstory there. So I think that's what's going to happen here. I don't think he, Kessler's going to be a straight up villain, but I think Kessler is going to be the reflection that Butcher doesn't like looking in the mirror and seeing. They are, they look similar. They act similar. Negan and Butcher are brothers in terms of characters they are they are they are, they are two sides of the same coin and i think butcher is going to through seeing the ways kester tries to push him and steer him he sees the part of himself he doesn't like and that leads to i don't think butcher can ever be redeemed i think you look back and rewatch the show and you're like he blew up a baby at the end of season 1 he killed madeline stillwell's baby like, let's not forget that. This is a bad man. <laughs> um, so I don't think you can ever fully redeem him, but I think you can have him be redeemable enough to be re-accepted by the boys by the end of the season. And it's interesting if Kessler is that now because Yui always was. Here's my last hot take on the boys, okay? When Homelander, it's more a confession than a hot take. When Homelander was chasing Yui, I was okay with Yui dying. I was like, Ned Stark, <gasps> do it, do it. I'm no! over it. I'm over it. I am over no. Yui. I like they need to make it like the talking to himself at times. I thought was really hokey. I thought it was really forced. It was like a character verbalizing their thoughts just for the sake of the audience doing it. And I'm like, isn't that why they have facial expressions when they're good enough actors? And that isn't to criticize that, you know, that isn't to criticize Jack Wade. Jack Wade's a great actor. And I like what he's done with Yui. I just feel like Yui's arc is kind of now forced. I don't care about. The, the mother storyline. There's an interesting theory out there going on that the mother storyline, his mother isn't there. It's happening in his head and he's going insane. Um, And I like that theory. It's a bit fan theory for me. I don't think it's actually the case. I don't know. But I'd be into that. But Yui needs something big because him and Annie as a couple, I'm into Annie being challenged by Firecracker. But as a couple, I'm just like, yeah, they're boring. Like, yeah, I get it. There's just... Butcher and Yui are almost, they're the two central characters that were introduced to, to bring us into this world. But I feel like the rest of the character and the cast have outgrown them. And they're now more interesting yeah. than these characters. To the point that I'm like, using Yui and killing him off as a Ned Stark style death that changes everything. That's something that interests me. Yeah. What are your own thoughts? Are you Do you still think there's juice in the Yui tank? Or am I being irrational here? Or what, what are your own thoughts? Because there was, for anyone who's not watching YouTube, there was shock and awe on Jerry's face when I said to kill Yui. <laughs> <laughs> I love Yui. Okay. Uh, simply because I love Jack Quaid. I can understand what you mean by I'm, I'm, I'm over. I'm over Yui. Because, you know, it, your first, your three episodes in, and the most exciting thing that's happened to Huey in this show, so in this series so far, is he's almost gotten killed by Homelander, mm. and he, you know, he was terrified. That, you know that 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 little bit of sweat that went down. I actually loved that scene. I thought that was fantastic. The one drop of sweat lands on Homelander. He goes, "Yeah, bastard." Yeah, and it's it's, it's that's essentially what he was. It was like you bastard, fucking laser beams. Fantastic, and then and he, uh, Huey absolutely shites himself. So it's like that's episode one, Huey to me. It was like that's that's what we've been looking for. This stuff with the with the ma and and the dad having the stroke and I'm like, I don't think it was needed. Mm. You could have killed the dad. You could have killed him off, and then he, that could have had him, you know, gone a bit mental, whatever it may be. Now, do I want to kill Simon Pegg? Fuck no. Because essentially the Huey character was written for Simon Pegg. So I'm like, no, we want to keep Simon Pegg around. That's what this guy was written for. But uh, no, I still love Huey. Um, I think from from now from episode three, we are going to start moving on from this now. Because he had that kind of heart to heart with the mother and, and he kind of understands why she left. Which was an interesting scene. Um, and it kind of mirrors kind of, that's very real life that's very real 
A lot of mm. people go through that. A lot of people, a lot of happens to a lot of people. So I'm like, yeah, you know, what? I like that. That was good. So I think from now, from next week, now we're going to, or, or should I say this week, we are going to see uh, more of Huey and more of a more compelling Huey now because I think he's actually going to be properly back in the fold. Um, what worries me about this season, um, you have uh, Sage, who's this super clever uh, superhero. You have Homelander, who's getting more and more unhinged. And the end of this episode, I'm like, oh, where is this going? He's going home. I'm like, oh, sweet. What does this mean? What's going on? I'm like, I don't know. This is fantastic. You've got a, a, the VP who could just look at you and pop your fucking head. Mm. So I'm like, I'm very worried for, for the boys. I'm like, I think by the end of this season, we're not going to have a full boys by the end of it. Ooh. And I'm like, who? And I suspect, I think there's, right. There's one character out of all of them, I think, I don't, Huey is like, he's start to finish. He's going to be there at the end. And I'd like to think Homelander is as well. Um, I think the one character who's possibly going to bite the dust, okay. and I don't know how, and I don't know what, you know, I don't know how, and I don't know what's going to happen, is possibly Starlight. Mm. I think Starlight, because because they are attacking her now. She is the central focus of this attack from Homelander or from Sage is because they, they need to get rid of the Starlighters. They're using the Starlighters to literally create a civil war. And, you know, and that's why it's like, it's very tongue in cheek in terms of the, the American politics stuff. That's like, and like eh, that's too much there, lads. But I think Starlight could possibly, if not now, but I'd say, or if it's not going to happen this season, I say early next season, I think she's the one expendable right now. Do I think they're all going to last at the end? Fuck no. Not a hope. Some of them are going to be gone by the end. I couldn't tell you who, and Ooh. I don't care. I don't care to guess because I don't okay. want to guess. But I think there's one expendable person, and that's Starlight. Okay, I'm very intrigued by that. I I have to get my head around that. I need some time to sit with it, but yep. uh, I'm intrigued by your ideas. Again, the boys, look, we're happy it's back. Three yep. episodes is a lot though to take in, and uh, do you know what? As well, I just want like three episodes in week one means we only get six weeks with the boys. And I'd love eight weeks and I'd love to digest every episode the way that like, you know, I give it its full kind of due, but it just seemed overwhelming. So again, it's not that we're negative. We're enjoying this, but I just felt like there was questions that needed to be asked and stuff we needed to flesh out. I'm looking forward to breaking into one episode a week and just dissecting the shit out of it because just trees a lot. And sometimes you can get your point across better. Just